Hello, hello, and welcome to Peak My Interest, a podcast dedicated to creativity. My name is Scoob Decker, and I am an artist and your host. PMI is an exploration in meeting some incredible artists, learning about their craft, and exploring what makes them create. Everyone has grown up with a pair of scissors, a glue stick, and a few magazines, and been told to create something. And if you were like me, I sure didn't create much. But over history, we have seen this style of craft influence the world. The data art movement, usually linked to propaganda, was a stand against the government, war, and politics of its times. Radical artists utilized its cutout images of newspapers and magazines, overlaying and intertwining images with words to tell a whole new story and evoke something within you. This is Demian's craft. Collage work and his other visual art has not been his main career, as he has been the head carpenter on the North American tour of Hairspray, but he is extremely passionate about his work. He is a very private person and doesn't want his face to be the cover of his art. He wants the art to speak for itself, and you can see it in the work. I was able to get this unicorn of an artist to dive into his collages with unique creativity and how he thinks in collages in the final episode of season two. This was recorded on June 25th in Dallas, Texas. I hope you look up their work and your interest is piqued. I hope you're having a grand day and please enjoy this week's episode I've titled Recycled Nostalgia. Hello, hello, and welcome to Peak My Interest. I am currently in Dallas, Texas, on the North American tour of Hairspray, sitting in a hotel room, living the hotel life, with this incredible artist. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Yeah? Yeah, thanks doing for having me. Doing anything fun and interesting lately? Been on a little tour called Hairspray. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Please tell us, what is your name and where are you from? My name is Demian. And I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And please, peak art interest. What is your craft? What we're talking about today is visual art. I do a uh, handmade cut and paste collage and self-portraiture drawings. And what's your specialty within your craft? I suppose exploring the unknown. Exploration of the self, self-interrogation. And what makes your work different that do other types of visual art? With collage in particular, right now, I guess I would say um, is that I wouldn't call myself a digital creator, which is, seems to be the, the new hot word out there that I'm seeing, digital creator. I do my collage cut and paste by hand, 100%. So I really need that tactile, widespread area at home. I, up until recently, my work table was called Big Red Table, and it was just a big five-foot-long table. Because I really need to, like having a big space to work in. You gotta get your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't, uh, I can't do the, like Photoshop. I could work with Photoshop after the fact, but working with all those layers and just everything contained in like a small box like mm -hmm. that, I need. Old I need school. To, yeah, I, I guess I'm just a little old school. So yeah, along with your visual artist today, what we're focusing on is your collage work. And I think it's very unique and very creative. And I'm excited to dive into it a little bit. Just looking at your work, it just gives you a feeling. It evokes an emotion. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thanks for that. And I'm excited to learn a lot about it. But what's your background? Do you have any education in visual art? No, not formal. I went to, after high school, I went into theater and did school for that. And all, you know, the visual stuff I just picked up along the way. It always been, you know, I used to draw a lot when I was a kid, younger, and I, I got away from that. But it found me again. And uh, I guess collaging started with, I just started, you know, I'd go on a trip someplace and I'd end up with like all these receipts or museum guides or maps and... You know, I just started putting them together, but it was never with really any intention. And I guess it just started from there. I guess my education in visual art would be like self-education, you know, like investigating myself, 
Earlier, you said that you're from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Is there anything about your upbringing in Scranton that helped turn you into a creator? Ah, uh, for sure. Yeah, as, as for anybody, you know, it's all very unique where, where you come from and how it shapes you. Uh, I come from a really blue collar place. You know, my family were coal miners. Dad worked at a factory. Mom worked three different restaurant jobs. Kind of made our fun with what we had, you know? So you're staying at grandma and grandpa's for a while. Like, you got a deck of cards, wooden spoon, and a roll of tape. Go play with that. All right, let's see what we can do. There weren't a lot of artists in my family, but a few. My grandmother was a singer. My uncle was in the theater. And then his son, my younger cousin, he's an actor as well. So a bit a few of us, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But I want to I want to uh, go back. My favorite thing from Scranton is anthracite coal. <laughs> That's my favorite thing about Scranton. Okay. All right. What about the coal? <laughs> oh, it's, what, it's what the city was built on. Yeah. I don't know. Anthracite coal is really rare. It's, not, it's like the rarest of coals. I am very unfamiliar with coal, so... It, it, it's the best for burning, I guess. All right. <laughs> and then when we talked earlier in this tour, you mentioned how during the pandemic you were in Vermont. Yes. Right? And that was a huge influence on your creation process. Yeah, I was living in a little house on a, on a small lake, and... I was really able to thrive in a time where a lot of people were suffering, which made me feel bad for a long time. But ever since we've had to go back to normal, I've really been struggling going back mm -hmm. <laughs> to that. But having like unrestricted free time, I could work good under a deadline, but sometimes it's nice. It's really freeing to mm -hmm. be told that. Uh, yeah. Now let's get into your craft a little bit. How do you start your creation process? When it comes to collage work, I'm sure a lot of people think about cutting out magazine strips and then overlaying them. Do you have an idea of what you want to make before you start? Uh, not, not usually. I find that the more I try to force an idea to become, it, it falls apart. You know, if I were to, you know, sometimes I'll fall into this trap of finding this really cool image in a magazine and cutting it out and be like, this is going to be the centerpiece of something, or it's all about this. And then, you know, then like months later, I'm still like, this thing is still floating around. I'm like, all right, just, you know, don't put it up on the pedestal, I guess. It's better to just not think about it so much sometimes. And I, I do find that when I let the unconscious kind of take over and you know, I'm really inspired by like, the surrealists and, uh, and, that, and that movement of art. Um, Rene Magritte was a big influence on me, which is probably obvious in some of my work. But I think it's really hard currently to, you know, for art to find its next level. I think everything is currently just like, um, we're just like recycling nostalgia, which I'm probably guilty of myself, you know. Like, you know, can you tell me the difference between a song that came out in 2002 and one that came out in 2022? I feel like uh, it's, it's getting harder to, <laughs> to do that with art. And, but, but then again, as a collage artist, that's what I do, right? I recycle, I, take, I steal from here and there. There's a great Jim Jarmusch quote, something along the lines of, there is no originality, like devour everything, steal from mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting idea that collage work is taking things that already exist and then turning it into something new. But from what I understand, that's kind of how your brain works, is that you overlay things in your mind and then you're just kind of letting your brain free flow onto the page. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of noise up there. <laughs> <laughs> so trying to turn it off sometimes breeds the best results. And there are ways, sometimes there's ways you could help doing that. <laughs> But yeah, I used to um, this little, I'll finish a piece and then I'll you know kind of investigate and in what I think I'm seeing in there. I actually had to stop seeing a psychoanalyst because he was way too into my stuff and would start pulling apart in a way that like I would start working on a piece of like what is he gonna say about this? And I had to like end that situation because I felt like it was getting in the way of my creativity. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing like a doctor to try and analyze your artwork. 
Now you also, speaking of music, you've also told me that you were, you've done audio collage work as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to play around with that. So how does that work in comparison to visual collage work? Well, the one thing I used to do, was, if I was taking, taking a drive in the car around Vermont, the truck I had at a the time, it, there was no aux input and there was no tape deck. It was just born in a weird era, so all you had was CD. You couldn't even like get an iPhone to play music through the stereo, you know? So I only had like three CDs. So I would just drive around Vermont and listen to the radio, and there weren't a lot of frequencies, so there's a lot of static. So I would just put, put my phone in there on the dash and hit record. And then as I was driving, I'd just randomly change the station. And then uh, play it back when I get home. And sometimes you know, the overlap of one channel to the next, whether it's like a radio DJ talking and then it switch into a lyric of a song, or sometimes it would match up and you would find some really interesting yeah. string words that you would maybe go put in a poem somewhere. Do you think was, would that influence your visual work at all? Yeah. Yeah. Would you try and? combine visual and audio pieces or maybe let them influence each other? Uh, mm. Or do you think in the future you might want to incorporate more audio? I thought about incorporating audio in a project one time, but it was more of a, uh, a written work. But no, I'm, uh, I'm... The project I was working on before I came on this tour, hope to get back to you, but I've been doing a lot of research for that, and that's going to be... A big amount of collages and an accompanying book that'll go along with it. So that's how I'm, I'm going to marry the written and the visual there. Mm -hmm. Now you say that sometimes you'll put things together and it'll take months for it to come together. Sometimes it'll take three minutes and it just comes together. How do you pick what is overlaid? What gets chosen to be on a piece? How do you decide what stays on a piece? I try to operate with less is more. Try not to overpopulate the thing with images. You know, think about it like a tableau in theater. Like you set this, you know, think about the scene you're, you're building. I'll look for things like what might serve as like a good backdrop, you know, to put the scene on. Or sometimes I like to build a little frame to have to force myself to work in within a scene. But it'll start, you know flipping through a magazine, finding some striking images, and you know, just a lot of time sitting at the desk moving stuff around, like a puzzle. And uh, we're finding a cool combination, like, oh, that would look cool next to this. Like, all right, that's cool. So those are married, like, I'm gonna keep that for sure. But I do find if it's taking too long, like if I'm there for all day and I come back the next day, sometimes it's just, it's just not worth trying to force it. You know, sometimes it's hard to trust the ones that come together in just three minutes. You're like, oh, this must be no good. Like, this ain't, you know, I did that too easy. But not, it isn't so. But I think any artist will be able to tell you that sometimes that can come together in a few right. minutes. Some songs have been created, some of the world's greatest songs have been created in 10 minutes. Right. And then some artists will spend years on a song that will never even get released because they're not happy with it. Sure. So I'm, I don't think about it too much anymore. And so I also, that also helps me, like, abandon something that I'm, like, struggling with. I'm like, it doesn't need to be this hard. If this is not working out and it's been a week and I'm still trying to figure this out, it's time to start over, which usually means my studio is a disaster. <laughs> so I need to clean up and then just start from the beginning, pull out a random magazine or a book from my filing cabinet of stuff and just start flipping through. Well, you just answered my question. How, how do you overcome a creative block? I'm sure it happens in collaging a lot because you'll just be throwing out a bunch of stuff cutting stuff and you'll get lost not sure what the next thing is but for you it's just kind of taking a step back maybe cleaning up a little bit and starting with a fresh slate yeah, yeah. sometimes like if the table's getting a little messy if like, I can't see the table and I'm like got stacks of magazine I got all these sometimes I fall into the trap of just going through a mag and just like tearing out page after page after page and then I'm like all right let's go to work I'm like I have too much to work with here there's like way too there's like I'm overwhelmed already. <laughs> so I have to trick myself. Like with writing, I'll try to trick myself. Like I'm going to go into an old document and just edit on something until I can like fool myself into like dropping in. And with collage, sometimes it's just like go flip through this magazine and like maybe not even tear anything out. Maybe just make a note. Like, you know, f mark the page you want to rip out for the next time or something. And then 
you know, just tell myself I'm not working. I'm just, and then uh, sometimes, next thing you know, I'm standing over the desk, shifting things around. When they come together, like you just know it. I don't know. Yeah, you just have that feeling. It's yeah, done. you just you it. just know it's done. Yeah. And if you know, if it's not done, you're probably right. There is probably something missing. You got to trust that. I think. Yeah, I think collage art is it's it's interesting because it's a very old form of art because it's something that you know kids were able to do when they were younger, way back when before there was all this technology with the photoshops and the digital aspects and it was driven a lot by politics people would use this art and use it as data art and sure use it. and so i think Propaganda. it's really interesting that you're kind of bringing this old school art form back but also putting your own twist onto it and putting your own art into it and i think that's that's really cool do you have anything that you want these collages to say do you have an overall theme in your artwork i, I guess i'd like to think that it's self-exploration or existential mm -hmm. for sure i don't know what the overall message is <laughs> um, no I've, I've noticed that there's a lot of self-discovery self-exploration within your artwork i think that's very evident i just didn't know if there was any specific way that you wanted people to look at them no i don't think it's up for me to uh, decide what it's about at all <laughs> what's the dylan quote i got nothing to say about these things i write i just write them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let them speak for themselves. So, I love to hear what people have to say and like see something that I don't see at all in there, and and it doesn't make it any more right or wrong. You know, art is so subjective. Mm -hmm. Speaking of subjective, how do you handle criticism? I'm sure with this form, a lot of people look at it and go, "I don't get it." Sure, that's fine. I kind of I've kind of gotten to the point where. Like, I'm always learning, but it's just easy to take what's useful and leave the rest behind. Hmm. And I don't know, there's not too many people I don't think that would really hurt my feelings with their criticisms of my stuff. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I don't even, you know, I don't have the answers for it. <laughs> so, you can't ask me. Now, can you tell us, what is success in collage art? Do you consider yourself successful? And what really gets you succeeding in visual art? I guess it's a success as long as you haven't stopped doing it. So I guess that's how I guess I would measure success at this point. So you're not financially driven at all? No, but uh, I mean, I have a website that has uh, probably not been seen by many people. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully this will get some people to go visit. Oh, yeah. TheTimeDinosaur.com. TheTimeDinosaur.com. That's my, uh, yeah, my alter ego, the time dinosaur. <laughs> I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I, if I said it wouldn't be great to just be able to stay home and, and make collages and make a living that way. Mm -hmm. Is that the goal? Is that what you want to do? Uh, Scoob, I think I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Aren't we all? And speaking of, I just got to bring it up now. Michael is our head carpenter for the national tour of hairspray. So collage work is definitely not his main career right now, but I learned about this craft long into the tour and figured I just had to pick his brain. So again, thank you for being here. Can you talk about your career and how that might affect your collage work? How does touring, how does musical theater influence your visual art. I'm really excited to see what happens when I get back to my studio because, um, oh, question for you and then I'll continue. If you were a natural disaster, what would it be? If I was a natural disaster? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It just like personality wise, because I would say like an avalanche. I'm from Montana. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm just, that's the one I'm most familiar with. It's, there's snow, it's mountainous. It's the one that I'm most familiar with. If you told me there was a hurricane coming, I wouldn't know what to do. But if you tell me I, there's an avalanche, I know I'm, I'm familiar with how to get around it and how to act around it. So hmm. that makes sense. I, I was just thinking about avalanches. I've been like naming people in my family based on natural disasters. My uh, mom's hurricane. My dad is earthquake. My sister is tornado. Uh, I'm volcano. I've decided. Okay. And uh, to get back to my work. I've been on this tour for four months here, and it's been a lot of harvesting, a lot of build-up, 
I... Michael has been put through a lot of stuff on this board, and you've handled it like a champ. I, I, I just want to say that as as somebody who's been around this for a bit. Thank you. And you thank you. Uh, happy to be here. But I'm really looking forward to. I know this will all come out in in different ways. It'll find its way into things I write, into mute, the songs I write. It's been great since Shars let me borrow her guitar the last week or so. I've been been able to get some creativity out that way because it's hard to bring your collage set up on the road with you well this is a very tough job it takes up all of your time and especially as the head carpenter not only are you loading in the show in the morning not only are you working the show not only are you managing all of the technicians but you're also talking to the venues and talking about advancing the show and making sure everything is safe for everybody it just takes all your time so I can't imagine you just having a few minutes to go over and cut out some magazines. So no. I'm very excited to see what happens with your work after this tour ends. Me too. Which is very soon. Soon. Yes. Soon. I've been, I have been sourcing stuff. I've been grabbing magazines and, and books and maps here and there on the road. So I could uh, hopefully use those for some inspiration. And how it will come out, yeah, I think interpretations of my time on the road will, will turn into collage. You know, you'll see a tableau of, you know, it's always a couple different <clears throat> things in one, right? It's never just one thing. It's maybe three or four different scenes becoming one scene. Mm-hmm. You know, just like a dream. Yeah. I mean, you say the scenes becoming a thing. To me, that sounds like theater. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's where it all started. I'm a, the theater's been the thing uh-huh. since, since the beginning. Yeah, but I, think I, think... It's, I think it's evident in your work that there is a story. And even though you might not have known exactly what that was at the beginning, when it's finished, you definitely have this feeling, this emotion. Right, and that's, and that's what it is. It's like, it's a feeling, you know. What I want people to take away from my art is that like, I want to know that like, something, that I resonated with them somewhere. Like, like there's somebody else out there that feels what I'm feeling. And even if it comes into a, you know, the same feeling could build two different interpretations of what the piece is, mm-hmm. but it's that, it's that initial resonance, that baseline. Yeah. And speaking of balancing your career with your craft, do you have any hobbies? Do they complement or contradict your craft? Uh, I really like throwing darts and playing pinball. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know how they, uh compliment my craft but but I'll know um, I am very guilty of lifting lines from poems and putting them in songs I'm writing okay. or you know sometimes taking a scene from a poem and trying to turn that into a collage I'm trying to, I'm getting better at trying to plan out what it is rather than just letting it be I'm trying to work on that a bit this project I'm working on now I'm doing a lot of research for it's very much everything has to be within the parameters of the subject. So that is forcing me a little bit to have to, like I have to be true to each one of these collages. Like this one has to represent overall this thing. So however I get there is up to me, but there are goals in mind now for each one of these 80 something collages I'm gonna have to do. (laughs) But maybe I've said enough for people listening to figure out what I'm working on. (laughs) 80-something <laughs> collages and a book that goes with it. Mm-hmm. Art grants. Oh, art grants, please. Art grants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, choir. Something else I've noticed about you is any time that I go to the gym, Michael is also there going hard. You are very physically fit. Do you find that to be helpful with your mindset while creating? Yeah, I, I can come up with some wild ideas when I'm like halfway through a sweat. Like we're all have to like hop off the exercise bike and write something down because juices are flowing, especially like first thing in the morning exercising. Why I go so hard is a different story. I really don't like being in the gym. I try to be as efficient as possible and spend the least amount of time there. And I still have really bad habits from being a wrestler. Like like wearing, you see me wearing sweaters. Yeah, you know? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and like not eating until noon. Uh, I got some bad habits left over. But, you know, also, you know, 
interrogation of the self, my art craft, my body image issues are there, sure. Mm. Yeah, uh, we all have them and we all struggle with them. Also, tour life isn't the greatest place. To... My gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. Can I get a real meal somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Fun fact, tour life is not as glamorous as everyone thinks. <laughs> no, you're on the road? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we talked about this a little bit, but what really gets your creative juices flowing? You, you work out, you like to play darts. Sad music. Sad music. Yeah, like listen to Bright Eyes for a couple hours and you'll, you'll, I'll, I'll make you some shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to the movies by myself, take myself to the museum, travel. No, know. I will say that is something cool about tours, that you do get to see a lot of museums and you are exposed to a lot of art. So yeah. that is very fun. It's been and nice. There's been that... a lack of that for me in Vermont the last eight years. Oof. Oh, I hope that influences your um, your projects coming up. Yeah, I'm, I'm really see. I don't even know where it's gonna end up. That's the exciting thing for me. Is I'm look. I can't wait to see where like my weekend, my shitty week in Houston turns up in a collage somewhere. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all had an interesting time in Houston. <laughs> Speaking of an interesting time, do you have any funny or interesting stories or events that have happened with your craft? Funny. <laughs> I had this idea where I was, <clears throat> I was, I never did it, but I had all these self-portraits that I was drawn, and it was during COVID, and I thought about reproducing them, because I, uh, I got myself a large format printer, so I could make my own reproductions, like, massive scale, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go downtown Montpelier one night, and I'm going to wheat paste all these big reproductions of my self-portraits all over the walls of buildings. And uh, I never did it. Hmm. But oh, oh, actually, oh, I do have a funny story. This actually was a, uh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say this. This feels a little, a little too self-important. My uh, my friend has this literary magazine, and uh, she's South African, and she asked me for some art for her magazine, and I sent her some collages. Like, you want to use any of these? And she really wanted to use. Two of the two of them that she wanted to use, she couldn't because she was having issues with getting her visa renewed, and she said if she published any any kind of art that challenged the U.S. government, that she would get deported back to South Africa. Apparently, two of my collages were too in that territory, or, which I thought was I took as a pretty high compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Are there any misconceptions about your craft? Yeah, that it, I guess I, would, I guess I could see people like when I say I cut and paste and like I do it all by hand that it might be looked at as just like arts and crafts, mm-hmm. hobby, like elementary. Um, elementary, yeah, yeah, that's a good word to use. Yeah, yeah. There's like because you say it's so old and it's like so ubiquitous and any like you have access to do doing that since you're a kid, you have the tools to collage. Since you could use a pair of scissors and roll a glue stick so I think I think it takes people seeing what you're working on when you tell them about collage art to for them to get a better idea other than just like you know what you know what preschool kids mm-hmm. are doing you know what yeah, I, mean? I mean there's a difference not that they're not doing great stuff because Picasso said like uh, it took me my whole life to learn how to draw like a five-year-old or yeah. something along those lines you know, sometimes things can be sold for five figures and sometimes they just need to go on the fridge yeah, there's this great, uh, oh, I always remember this, like, children's poetry, this one child wrote, a poem is a egg with a horse inside of it. And I was like, that's, that's the fucking greatest line ever. <laughs> <laughs> and what's next for the world of your craft? I know you, you, you mentioned how you just bought a giant printer that can help you make these massive things. Oh, well, actually, that one is in need of repair. I'm saving up for a new one that I'm hopefully able to buy from working on this tour that also has a large flatbed scanner built in so I could be an all-in-one studio. I could scan and digitize my own stuff, touch it up on Photoshop, print it out right there. Do you think that, that the digital art is influencing collage work nowadays? I think there's some 
really great stuff you could do with digital art and like collage wise and I'm sure if I took the time to really want to get into that I, mm-hmm. I'm i sure I would enjoy it but I don't know I'm there's a little, just nothing like a good old I'm a hand little more cut. meat and potatoes yeah but what's next is uh, I want to get back to this project that was, as I mentioned, that I was researching, and there's an antique gallery in back in Montpelier, and I think the owner was wanting to uh, hang some of my stuff. Oh. So I might work on maybe getting some of my things framed up. Fantastic. For maybe I'll get a little show. And next for you personally, are you interested in telling everybody what your your plans are with this project? No, I'm sure other people have thought about it before. It's all right. That's all fine. But please be on the lookout because he's told me and it is very exciting and I think <laughs> it's very cool and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Where can we see your work? Um, right now you can find me on Instagram. It's been uh, it hasn't been very active, but on Instagram at Time Dinosaur and uh, my print shop online at thetimedinosaur.com. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we wrap up? Yeah, don't be bored. Don't be bored. I hate being bored. Yeah. There's so many things to do. Please don't be bored. I can't thank you enough for joining me and piquing my interest. I do end with one last question. If there was one craft that you could excel at, other than your own, what would you want to do? Well, I'm getting close to 40, so I should probably figure out how the stock market works. <laughs> I, it's very, uh, very smart. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. I completely understand that. And thank you to all my peekers out there. Please let me know if you know of any special or unique artists or art forms you think I should explore. I'm currently in Dallas, Texas, and cannot wait to see where Peak My Interest takes me next. Remember, creativity comes from the heart. Push yourself. Be kind to each other. I'm Scoob Decker, and thank you for helping me pique my interest.